Христос Воскрес, Christ is risen. My name is Roman Fihas. Христос Воскрес, мене звати Роман Фігас, і я є виконавчим директором Екомунічного інституту при Українському католицькому університеті, Інституту екомунічних студій. Запрошую вас на семінар, який присвячений темі Синодальної церкви. Цей семінар ми проводимо і наживо, і в режимі онлайн. Хто бажає слухати цей семінар українською мовою, до вашого відома є паралельний синхронний український переклад. Glory to Jesus Christ, my name is Roman Fijas, and on behalf of the Institute of Ecumenical Studies at the Ukrainian Catholic University, I am opening the seminar that is entitled What is Synodal Church? Our seminar will take place mostly in English, but for those who are listening to us online, there will be a chance and an opportunity to listen to the Ukrainian translation if you press the button translation. Сьогоднішнім нашим гостем і головним спікером семінару є отець професор Гашем. Він прибув до нас до Львова. Католицького університету з Лівану. Отець Гашем є мельхідським греко-католицьким священником Мельхідської церкви. І він буде говорити... Father Gabriel is a professor at the Pontifical Faculty of Theology at the Holy Spirit University in Kaslik, Beirut, in Lebanon. His uh, academic interest is ecclesiology, ecumenism, and Christian presence in the Middle East. Uh, uh, Father Gabriel also is a chief editor of the ecumenical magazine Pro Orient uh, Chrétien, and he also is an acting member of the International Theological Commission uh, in Rome. Uh, we are very pleased, Father Gabriel, to meet you here in Viv, and thank you for coming here. And uh, uh, we are looking forward to your presentation. First of all, because you are the uh, member of the, Ecumenic, of the Theological Commission in Rome, which uh, elaborated for many years and worked hard on the document what, about the synodality, about the synodal path of the church, and we know that in October there will be a big synod of the Catholic Church about this issue. And also we are very interested to listen to you as a representative of the Middle East churches uh, who also has their own vision of what the Synodal Church has to look like. So, Father, the floor is yours. Thank you so much. Uh... Father uh, Roman, uh, let me first express how uh, happy am I. It's really my pleasure and my honor to be here in Lviv at this uh, faculty, in this faculty and uh, ecumenical institute. Um, I would like also to express the solidarity and the to assure uh, the Ukrainian people and Ukrainian church of our prayers in Lebanon. Thank you for inviting me and welcoming me so warmly here in Lviv. Today we'll talk about synodality and church life. Since Pope Francis launched the process, the synodal process in 2021, the Catholic Church all over the world uh, shows a lot of interest on synodality. So many of us ask what is synodality, what for? How did synodality evolve through centuries? Is it something new, an innovation in the Catholic Church? What about the uh, practice in synodal practice in other churches? Also, what's coming? What's the future of synodality? No. Uh, th this is why I chose 
two photos, an icon with uh, an ecumenical uh, council or synod where there is not only bishops, but maybe other participants. And the last synodal continental assembly of the Catholic churches in the Middle East. Synodality between yesterday and today. As introduction, I will uh, start by uh, some remarks. The first one, synodality is not an innovation. Synodality is a constitutional element of the nature of the church. Church is synodal, or she is not, it's not a church. Then, synodality, as everyone knows already, is translated by walking together. But we are not a club. Within a club, people are walking together, are sharing things together. Uh, we are not people who, who are walking without knowing where to go or how to walk. I would say that the goal of our walking together is determining our way to walk. We are the people of God called by him to work together behind Christ, following Christ under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, hoping that one day we'll reach together the kingdom of God. Synodality is rooted and founded in the divine life. The Holy Trinity as communion is somehow walking together, is sharing uh, each other life, and uh, the divine, the Holy Trinity is also sharing our life, our human life, and the creation life. Uh, We'll see in the Old Testament tradition, God is walking with his uh, people and taking care of his people under different sides. So for us, synodality is not a fantasy. It's not something new. It's Christ's lifestyle because Christ incarnated to walk with us until death, to share our life. So we who are baptized in Christ, we are sharing the life of Christ, the lifestyle of Christ. Uh, synodality is a constitutional element of the nature of the church. As member of the uh, International Theological Commission and Subcommission who wrote the document on the synodality in the life and the mission of the church, and also as member of the theological commission for the uh, synodal process. I can uh, witness that uh, at the beginning we, we thought that synodality is simply a mean to reach another goal, to go further. And little by little, uh, and deepen our uh, knowledge our discovery of the richness of synodality. 
we found out that synodality is not a mean. Synodality is the nature of the church. Because synodality means communion as the church is communion. It's the Holy Trinity communion, but it's also church communion, inter inter-church communions and communion with the world. So I hope that these remarks will help us to better understand the rest of the uh, presentation. Synodality has two dimensions, a theological sacramental uh, dimension and a canonical and pastoral uh, dimension. Theological dimension has foundation in the Old Testament because God was present in the midst of his people, walking with them, uh, sometimes as a column of smoke, uh, of uh, lights. Of this presence and this uh, accompaniment of God to his people is uh, the first sign of synodality within history. In the New Testament, we can uh, understand why Jesus was walking from place to place, from village to village, to proclaim the gospel of God, to announce the kingdom, to heal sickness, to show the God's love to humankind. He was walking with people. He joined people, he was walking with them, and he is leading them to the kingdom. In the same time, we can uh, see that at the end of the uh, gospel, or gospels, hmm, the resurrected Christ is still walking, even after the resurrection with his church, with his disciples. And we can just refer to uh, Luke 24, disciples of Emmaus, how Jesus joined them, listened to them, walked with them, helped them to uh, remember the history of salvation, his presence, his words, his actions, and then how he leads them to get back to Jerusalem, to the church, and to, be, uh, to become missionaries with other members of the church. The after the scriptural di uh, dimension or references, we can uh, lie to the ecclesiological dimension. Synodality is the communion's expression. Hmm? How could we express communion today within the church, local or between church, among churches? By synodality. If we are committed one to another, if we are sharing divine life together, if we are, um, I would say it, uh, facing, meeting the same challenges together, then we are in a synodal uh, mood, in a synodal communal life. So from uh, the beginning, the Holy Liturgy, the Eucharist, was the better expression of the synodal worship and life of the church. No church if it is not synodal. It does mean that this church has no communion, is not communion, it has nothing to do with church of God, ecclesia to theo. Synodality is related to the science of the church we confess in the credo, 
Unity, Catholicity, Holiness, and Apostolicity. If we are united, then we are synodal. If we are synodal, in, if we are living in a synodal way, then we are united. If we are in a synodal uh, process, that means that, uh, like God, we do not exclude anybody. We are open. We are open to enlarge our tent to, uh, to integrate everyone. If we are not holy, if we don't live, live uh, the holiness that God is offering us in his church, then we cannot be synodal. And if we are not synodal, that means that we are not holy. And the apostolicity, the church, is related to the apostle, apostle proclamation of the gospel. Uh, and uh, through all the ages uh, and uh, through the mission of each Christian church, Christian community. Otherwise, the raison d'etre of the church is not yet uh, accomplished, accomplished. Synodal church is then ecumenical because it has to be one. Synodal church is missionary church. The church is not the raison d'etre of itself. The church exists to proclaim the gospel to the end of the world. So synodality grows up with the prayer and intercession for the world, like Abraham, you know, and like the mother of God and the whole uh, old saints. Hmm? Synodality is a spiritual path, is a path with God. He called us first to walk with him. It was not we who invited him to walk with us. We are following Christ in order, under the guidance of the Holy Spirit once again to reach the Father's kingdom. I don't know if there is already questions or of, uh, if uh, everything is uh, clear. Hmm? So, uh, I would get back. The theological and sacramental uh, dimension of uh, synodality is the worship, is the gathering, is the kahal, is the church worshiping God. And sacramental, uh, because uh, it is uh, in order, in some order, it's not chaotic and canonical and pastoral. And this is another question and another uh, dimension. The first, I would say, not canonical, but historical experience of synodality uh, is offered to us in Act 15, where we can find this uh, model of synodality. The church in Antioch has a big problem. It asks itself, should we uh, accept nations or only Jews to the salvation? And then the church sent Paul and Barnabas to Jerusalem to ask other uh, apostles, but to consult the church about this issue. So they arrived, they were welcomed by the whole church. They presented the issue, they informed others about the problem, the whole church. And then only 
the ministers of the church with apostles get their own meeting to discuss and to deliberate and then they get back to the whole church. Once the whole church approved the, the apostles and ministers' decision, then the decision were accepted and proclaimed uh, under these uh, very uh, meaningful words, the Holy Spirit and us, the Holy Spirit and us. Uh, so synodality was first uh, experienced in every local church as people of God walking together, living together. Then, uh, the tradition told us that in the minor Asia, around 160, uh, some churches, local churches, started to meet together one or twice per year to discuss issues and to debate about their lives, about their uh, faith, about the, their confession of faith, and until uh, maybe uh, the third or maybe the fourth century, these provincial synods was the highest level of expression of communion. It was the articulation of the communion not only within every church, but among local churches. You know, it's important for us to know that these provincial synods are the origin of our patriarchal statue. When the Protos, the first one, is determined to decide only when consulting and having the approval of the others. And when the others cannot decide anything important without the approval of the protos. Mm -hmm. So synodality started as a reciprocity between the one who is in charge and the others. And this is a good expression of communion where things are not going in a chaotic way, but where there is no place to despotism or excess of authority. Then uh, I, I would say that provincial synods were regular twice per year. Huh? Uh, just before the uh, Lent time uh, preparing to Christmas, to Epiphany, and after the Pentecost, where bishops were uh, uh, allowed to leave their territory, their diocese. So, apostolic experience in a synod that is unique in the history of the church. Regular meetings, regional meetings, and then ecumenical councils that started in the fourth century as expression of the synodality of the communion uh, in the Roman Empire, in the Ecumeni at that time, hmm, which was the synonym of the civilized world. And until now, we have a lot of difficulty to define the ecumenicity's criteria. Just a word uh, about the provincial synods. They were perceived as local churches meetings and not as bishops meetings. So until now in the... Orthodox churches 
only metropolitans are members of synod and not auxiliary bishops. Ah, I'm sorry, I'm uh, getting in the wrong way. So, synodality means the delicate issue of the articulation between different communes and communion structures. In our uh, document, Synodality in the Life of the, and the Mission of the Church, in 2018, we propose this uh, formula, all, some, the one. The whole people of God has to participate, uh, is a part uh, of the Synodal life, the sum, which means the ministers, the ordained minister, and mainly perhaps bishops, has, uh, have uh, a special role within the people of God, not vis-a-vis -vis and nor un, uh, not say and it, above. above the people of God. And the one for us Catholic is the role of the Pope in the service uh, of unity and communion. Conser uh, preserving unity and community within the global church, we can say within the universal church. So the question is, what is the specific role of each category of them? What the role of the people of God? What the role of the bishops? And uh, by the way, uh, many, many bishops uh, declared that they are against the synodal process because uh, they thought that uh, their power as bishops will be stolen and given to somebody else. It's not about power. Uh, it's about sharing divine life. So are synods a kind of bishops' clubs? Why? Am I asking, uh, rising up this question? Because, in fact, some of our synods became like a bishop's club in the sense that the people has not any role to do in, the, in, in, in our synods. Uh, neither uh, deacons nor priests, you know. It's not bishop's affair. The church of God is the people of God. And it is not bishop's uh, meeting. Uh, so what is the new? Why synodality just now? How after the Second Council of Vatican, uh, the Catholic theology has evaluated in the sense of synodality. What's the difference between collegiality and synodality? Hmm? Now, the first Council of Vatican proclaimed the uh, dogma about the primacy and infallibility of the Pope without any link with the role of bishops or the, the role and the, the, the place of the, the people of God, the baptized uh, people. And the Second Council of Vatican was worried about, was uh, occupied by defining collegiality even without precising the link with the papacy. And less with the people of God. And unfortunately, collegiality uh, was sometimes understood as a communion between bishops only as persons, as uh, individuals, and not as the, the leaders or the icons of their people of the diocese, no? And of course, all this led 
to a form of clericalism. A dividing church between those who are ordained, the ministers, and those who are not. And before the Second Council of Vatican, definition of lay man was not clerk, not clergy. So uh, something very important happened uh, with the Second Council of Vatican. Uh, mainly in the, uh, it was a kind of reversement. Uh, the church is not the hierarchy. The church is not uh, uh, the, the priests and the, the authority. The church is the people. First, the people of God and the ministers are uh, at the service of the people of God. So, until now, because of the uh, uh, strength of this clericalism, we are not ready to really receive the church, uh, the image of, of the church as people of God. So, before the, the, the Pope, uh, Pope Francis launched the synodal process, uh, our commission talked about in a document, in an academic, spiritual, theological, canonical way, and pastoral way even. Uh, so what's new? What's new? For me, it's the first time, not only for the International Theological Commission, that a pope is trying to, to make a document actual, current, to, uh, how to say it, to, uh, to make it real, mm -hmm. huh? to translate it from theological discourse to pastoral and church reality. And it is a big effort. It's something outstanding. Never during the history, although um, in some ecumenical councils in many synods, uh, lay people or deacons or priests were participating, but it is the first time where the whole people of God is invited to be active, to be, uh, uh, how to say it, to, to be uh, not, not only involved, to be a part of the church life in a dynamic way. This is why uh, Pope Francis uh, is referring to the second chapter of Lumen Gentium, and he called it the people of God's theology. And he mainly referred to Lumen Gentium uh, 10, where the uh, royal priesthood of all baptized uh, faithful is recognized and where the difference between the royal priesthood and the ordained ministers uh, ministries is uh, precisely distinguished. Then 12, the census fide here. The Holy Spirit guidance given to all baptized people. Huh? Uh, so the church uh, will not be, uh, uh, how to say it, uh, will not fall down. 14, the number uh, which expressed the meaning of the Catholicity, the 18, the meaning of the mission related to the baptized, baptism and not to a special call addressed to uh, consecrated people as it was before the council. To this aspect, we can add the social evolution and the evolution within societies, modern society and development toward more participative forms. 
even uh, royal families and uh, royalties around the world cannot uh, really uh, impose their authority or have uh, major authority. They are submitted to uh, systems uh, in different countries. So the image of one person hmm, who is, uh, uh, so I would say, who is ruling is not anymore the model in the society and the church have, has to, uh, has lessons uh, to uh, learn from the societies uh, nowadays. Uh, many of you perhaps uh, asked about the Synod of Bishops which was created by uh, Pope Paul uh, VI after the, uh, at the end of the uh, Second Council of Vatican. And what its role as a new structure of communion? Huh? It is in the service of collegiality or could be uh, nowadays a, an instrument for synodality? Which outcome after 15 years? This is a, a big question. Uh, so with Pope Francis, we are moving from a synod of bishops to the church synods, where lay people, uh, members of the synod, can vote. And maybe the votation of the members of synod will have a decisive role and deliberative role and not only a consultative role, you know. So what the role of other collegial and synodal structures, the cardinal uh, collegium, the, uh, I'd say it, uh, all the congregations or the castries of the curia, uh, the bishop conference, national or regional bishop conference, what, what would be the role now with the synodal uh, process? And the main question would be who decides in the church, in a synodal church, who is going to decide? I uh, mentioned major documents about synodality that can help to go further. Uh, first one, and for me it's the most important, synodality in the life and the mission of the church, uh, the Chete'i document in 2018, uh, and available on, uh, online uh, in different languages. Uh, then Pope Francis, uh, uh, I would say it, uh, uh, speech uh, during the ceremony comm commemorating the 50th anniversary of the institution of the Synod of Bishops when he uh, said uh, openly, synodality is what God is expecting for his church uh, in the third millennium. And then the continental uh, document that closed the first stage of the uh, synodal process entitled Enlarge Your Tent, which was submitted to different continental assemblies for the second stage, which is now closed, uh, to express uh, and to make more uh, synthesis and more uh, appreciation or more remarks on the synodal process in, uh, in order to better prepare and experience the first part of the Bishop Assembly next October. So, what is the specificity of the synodal process? Listening to each other, to each other first. Listening to each other means accepting to listen to the difference to the other as different, not 
not as a copy of mine, not, not as an echo of my voice, hmm? listening to each other. It's a hard experience which demands uh, a kenosis, you know. We have to be detached from our uh, selfishness, from our, uh, how to say it, uh, proud to accept, to listen to the other, to accept, to learn from other people. And then the dialogue, we are not, uh, uh, we don't agree to everything said by the other person. So we have to dialogue, to be in dialogue with, and then together to listen to the word, the God's word, in order to discern, to walk together in the truth, toward the truth. Uh, to be able to get out of my own truth, my own words, my own attitude, uh, my own beliefs. And then maybe together trying to make a decision and ask those who are wi the wisest to take the decision in accordance with the decision making, with the whole process, and learn to act together, and then receive what we decided, what we are doing together, and evaluate it on the light of the Holy Spirit guidance. It's not easy, but it is already a, an experienced uh, process. Hmm? Uh, I would say that until now, uh, in different commissions, the method that was uh, adopted, adopted is the spiritual conversation, which tried to avoid uh, the clash between opinions, between persons, and which leads uh, faithful to uh, listening and to uh, express what they feel uh, uh, after listening to the word of God or listening to other people. Synodality and church life, synodality is based, is founded on the prayer. The synodal process is a spiritual process. Without the guidance of the Holy Spirit, there is no synodality. And this guidance hopefully uh, helps us to convert to change mind, it's difficult to change minds, mindsets, you know, it's maybe the most difficult in the uh, humankind, uh, human person's life to be converted, to accept. You know, nowadays a lot of people are against synod, why? Because they, they think that Everything is already decided, and the Pope will, in, will uh, use the synod and synodality to introduce changes in the church, to ordain uh, women, and to uh, 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 bless the uh, homosexual couples, and to uh, uh, allow abortion, and uh, they are totally against the synodality, but they are wrong. It's not synod the synodal process. And others, from a liberal point of view, want to change everything from day to day. And it is not about changes in the church, it is about the change of our hearts. 
to be able to listen, to be able to be obedient to God's will. This is why there is no plan, and it should not be a plan for the synodal process. The only plan would be the Holy Spirit plan. It's an adventure where God is leading us, and we have to have a lot of confidence to follow God's will, to follow Christ under the guidance of the Holy Spirit to the Father's kingdom. This is the first part, uh, and maybe I will take 10 minutes to, uh, uh, to switch to something very punctual, very actual, current, uh, a special synodal experience in the Middle East. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it would be useful, Abuna, uh, if there are questions for this part of uh, the seminar. Uh, we have still some questions uh, written before the lecture started, but I think that we will go to the, another second part of the, uh, yeah. of the presentation. Afterwards, we'll switch to the okay, questions. Okay, we'll have conversation mm -hmm. and uh, debate. Uh, I don't have the second part. Okay. Synodality and context, contextuality. Hmm? We in the Middle East, in a synodal process, uh, before even the Roman synodal uh, process, started uh, a new experience. Hmm? Uh, in the Middle East, we are living a very hard situation since many years huh, because of the political instability, uh, uh, social injustice, uh, and before of many, many other uh, factors. And unfortunately, as people of God, sometimes we felt that the church leaders, the church synods, are not providing us with a prophetic word, common word, that can have a, a big meaning, that could be a sign of hope for these populations, for these people of God in the Middle East. So first of all, uh, within the Middle East Council of Churches, Department of Theological and Ecumenical Studies, we started uh, this process, uh, at, at that time we called it uh, Keros Middle East Toward uh, Global Church uh, Compact. The idea was to deliver a text on a theological approach on the meaning of the Christian presence in the Middle East within the context uh, and to be delivered to the whole world, to the organization related to the churches in the Middle East, and to even to civil organizations uh, interested or involved within the Christian presence in the Middle East. So after some difficulties, we find ourselves 15 people, men and women, ordained and lay people, uh, Catholic and uh, Orthodox and Evangelicals from different countries, uh, from different churches. So we are an, an ecumenical uh, a group uh, and of experts, of uh, scholars, uh, theologians and uh, experts in geopolitics and in human sciences, history, and we met together um, and we had this project, which is uh, published, which, which was uh, uh, published 
uh, and launched in a ceremony in uh, September 2021. And the document is entitled, We Choose Abandoned Life. And you can uh, check it and find it uh, on the website of our group, entitled, the address is We Choose Abandoned Life, one word, dot com. Mm -hmm. We Choose Abandoned Life, and you can find it in French, in English, in Arabic, in German, um, uh, soon in Danish, and in Italian. What is We Choose Abandoned Life document? It's a prophetic ecumenical document which was supposed to be one word delivered by, the, by all the church leaders in the Middle East. In the Middle East, there are six apostolic patriarchal churches, patriarchates, huh? and one honorific patriarchate the Roman Catholic Patriarchate or the Latin Patriarchate of Jerusalem. What's coming to all these communities? Huh? Then I can say that we choose abandoned life is a contextual theology document. Uh, we use some contextual theology methods. For example, our method was an uh, inductive method. We started by consultations. We made more than 10 consultations for theologians, 10 for the geopolitical uh, experts. We brought together more than 100 experts, and then we had two uh, consultations with Muslims, uh, expert in relationship with Christianity or in interface relations. And then we had a, one consultation with four Jewish uh, experts from outside Israel because the, the issue was so delicate hmm, uh, regarding the uh, historical, the actual political situation in the Middle East. And then we, may, uh, we had a, one consultation with uh, young people in Lebanon, and we were uh, planning to do it in different countries and churches uh, uh, in the Middle East. But unfortunately, uh, the pandemic uh, didn't allow us to go our plan. Uh, so, uh, after uh, after math, we made a, uh, a synthesis and we asked two members to prepare a draft of skeleton. We approved the skeleton after corrections and then we started writing our document, discussing a lot uh, uh, and uh, going deeper and deeper to understand every... Uh, Every word, every, uh, uh, I would say, sentence, and then we launched the document. We published it. Contextual theology in the Middle East. We first studied the geopolitical context. We tried to understand the context, to dialogue with the context, and we understood that Diversity was the sign of the uh, Middle East. Hmm? Many languages, many cultures, many uh, races, many uh, uh, ethnies, many uh, histories, many traditions, hmm? and diversity could be a richness but it also could be a source of conflicts between strengths and weakness. How to manage with diversity? This is the main question in the Middle East. Then we, uh, we understood that 
in the Middle Eastern societies, uh, we avoided to receive modernity or postmodernity. So modernity was aborted in the Middle East, and nowadays we are experiencing an ambiguous globalization that hurt a lot of people and a lot of uh, societies, uh, I would say it, uh, parts. Then we stop, we made a stop on the Arab Spring and we tried to understand what was the hope mainly of youth people and women uh, during the Arab Spring or through the Arab Spring and how it was also aborted and we didn't uh, reach any transformation in our societies as we were hope because of political manipulation and uh, use of power and other factors. And we also uh, uh, kept it the importance, catched the importance of the environment uh, after all these words and the uh, uh, and the problem uh, of health, so ecology and pandemic were also uh, in the heart of our uh, discussions and dialogues. On the ecclesiastical and theological context, we also have diversity of churches and traditions. Uh, and uh, synodality is togetherness, is the choice to work together and not to be enemies one for the other, but to be together, walking on the God's road. Huh? So, synodality in the Middle East has ecumenical challenges. I would not uh, go in details. We don't have time first, and you know better, uh, may, you know maybe a lot of uh, things about these issues. Theological and spiritual formation. The formation is the future of the church. Christian presence in the Middle East lies on the, re rely on the quality of formation in seminaries and theological schools. Then we have the problem of existence and survival. Many, many Christians and even many churches and church leaders are very worried about the survival of the Christians in the Middle East and uh, are suffering from the complex of minority. Huh? They are uh, invaded by fear, fear for the future, for the future of their children. And you cannot deliver a good witness of resurrected Christ when you are in a fear. And the problem of the link between churches and society or churches and societies uh, what would be the political role and how churches and Christians have to be integrated in the life of their people, of the, their society. I think that many, maybe many of these issues are common with yeah. some uh, church uh, issues in the Western uh, environment uh, and maybe some of the theological points are common with uh, Western churches or with Ukrainian church. So, the challenges of the present and the stakes of the future, in the Middle East we are guessing that a new world will be, will, will, uh, will be born but we don't know yet uh, how it will be shaped. Uh, 
we are convinced that we are going towards a new social contract. We cannot anymore accept to live the same way with the, diff with the same challenges uh, and the same problems, mainly. So, synodality on the spiritual level means togetherness. Make the choice to be with the other, to live with him, to share with him, to be connected to him now and for the future, you know. And it means the promotion of the human fraternity in our society. The outcome of synodality, the outcome of togetherness, witness, would be human fraternity. Uh, and then, the culture of human brotherhood or sisterhood, which, which means that it would be a choice once again, and not an obligation, a, a, a fatal uh, uh, fact. So we have to renew our theological discourse, our theological perception, our theological, uh, I would say it, uh, vision of the world. We have to deliver a world that is understandable by people, by other people, by Muslims, by Jewish, but non-believer, agnostics, but by everyone. And this is the meaning of the uh, synodal process and the title of the continental uh, document, enlarge your time. So what we have to do, what would be our choices to get the abandoned life that Christ is promising us, to reform our churches and renew our theological discourse in a synodal and inclusive way, not only from above, but also from down up. The revival of a committed ecumenism beyond ecclesiastical pseudo irenism and folklore. Uh, we meet once per year to greet each other, have accolades and hugs, and, uh, and then to get uh, the second day to get in a uh, life where we are uh, treating each other as enemy. A new commitment for a better interface relations. We misunderstood Muslims and Jews, and they misunderstood us. And we have to be in new dialogue terms and experiences. Hmm? accepting the commitment to the path of human fraternity to give importance to women and, uh, and youth. In our team, we already uh, are involved in a synod for women in the Maronite church, which will deliver a good text document in, after one month, and uh, by the end of June, and it is a long and a very huge process where uh, in the, with the inclusive uh, method, every, I, I would say almost every parish is involved in this synodal process uh, regarding the focus groups, the uh, questioner, questionaries, uh, and other processes. And we had uh, already a, an outstanding experience with our partner Pro Oriente with youth from different countries in a synodal process. We are listening to young people uh, and we are accompanying them, we are supporting them to decide by themselves uh, how to discern the God's will for them and for their churches. Maybe I will stop here, yeah. okay? Uh, maybe if we have the, the opportunity by the end of this seminar, we can 
talk a little bit about our Synodal Continental Assembly mm -hmm. in the Middle East. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you, Father Gabriel, for presenting us uh, the nature uh, of the Church with this uh, Synodal and uh, in it's, it's a double nature of the church. From one side, it is, as we say, primacy, and from another side, it is synodality. So it always comes together. And, but when sometimes you're forgetting of the one part, the church is missing something. And uh, I also like, your, uh, uh, like uh, that you stress uh, uh, on synodality, uh, and you expressed it as adventure, uh, where God himself is calling us, inviting us to participate, and we don't know how it finishes. We, we can't have a very clear vision. It's like a face. You are following those who are calling you. It's very also important to understand what is uh, the nature of synodality. And we already have some questions from uh, our online uh, listeners and uh, all those who want uh, uh, participants here in the conference hall could also uh, raise their hands to answer uh, to, and uh, raise their questions. Uh, so, uh, first of all, uh, 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 Father, how do you think the consultation process is going on? Is it successful? Uh, how it uh, looks like on the global level, because in November there will be a big synod of the Catholic Church, uh, and there are a lot of job who has uh, every church uh, should done. Do you think it would it is enough time to uh, complete all this job and to have some final document and reorganize the church life uh, after the synod in November? No, uh, as we discovered that the synodality is the life of the church. So, uh, time is not important anymore. Of course, the synodal process is limited to three hours now because Pope Francis extended it to 20, 24, mm -hmm. the process. Uh, personally, I would say it depends on churches, on bishops, on leaders. Uh, uh, so the experience is different, very different from uh, country to country, from diocese to diocese, from bishop conference to bishop conference. Um, what's important is that the process is launched. Synodality is... Um, again, uh, uh, I would say it, renewed mm, at life of churches, and it is an irreversible, uh, um, I would say it, phenomenon. Mm -hmm. The train has uh, last the station, and he will maybe have uh, ha he will have uh, a lot of difficulties uh, on its journey. He will stop many times. Uh, he, he will need uh, preparation, reparations, but he will continue its way. Mm -hmm. uh, I observed and I can say that for the first stage there was a lack People didn't understand what synodality is really and couldn't be involved. And even bishops were not ready to, uh, to launch the process in their mm. dioceses. Even many religious orders was not uh, interested by the synodal uh, approach, synodal path, you know. Uh, in the Middle East, after the uh, celebration of our Continental Synodal Assembly, a lot of young priests and uh, nuns, but also a lot of, of, of uh, lay people made initiatives and uh, launched uh, uh, processes in their diocese, in their country, in their church, 
and they started to understand what synodality is and they appreciate, appreciated the synodal path. So I think personally that more we will um, go further, better, the synod synodality will be practiced and experienced and more will get fruits of it. Thank you, Father. There is also another interesting question about the German synodal, synodal discussions. It's, let's uh, describe it in a way that liberals fighting with conser conservators? Conservatives. 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 And uh, how it influenced the church in Europe? What are the challenges uh, of these discussions? Uh, or maybe there are some benefits of it? I would uh, say uh, maybe <laughs> hard words about this. Anyway. Uh, synodality is contextual, mm -hmm. yeah. you know. Contextuality is a must for a good practice of synodality, which means that the context of the church and the Christians in Germany is not the same like in Austria or in Australia or in Africa or in the Middle East. This is why synodality offers us the opportunity, the chance uh, to, uh, to be more accurate, more updated to our context and to what God's will is for us here. And now, you know, this is why synodality is, could be a synonym of diversity. We are, uh, I would say it used to know about a certain uniform uh, models within the church. God calls us, is calling us to more openness and to more acceptance of difference, not only of diversity. And this is listening. He is calling us to accept, to listen to the other's different voice and uh, attitude. Mm -hmm. So I think that by the end, the synodal German process, or the German synod, mm -hmm. even it will, uh, it has already uh, made made some uh, some decisions. Yeah. I think he will join soonly the global synodal process, and it will express the German ideas which will be discussed, debated, discerned, among other. Uh, second point, and it is a little bit hard for me to say it, the European church model is not anymore the universal model. And it it would be reduced to the European model to be lived in Europe only. Somehow, and I will be severe, neither colonialist spirit or neo-colonialist spirit, although all the challenges will continue to rule the church uh, church, the inter-churches, uh, uh, I'd mm -hmm. say it, uh, relations. Mm -hmm. I would even say the speculative theology of the Europe, West Europe mainly, what was called, will not be any more 
the theology of the Catholic Church. Diversity is also renewal of theological discourse, open to different theological approaches of the mystery of God and the, life, the church life. Mm. I don't know if I was uh, yeah. clear enough, and uh, I hope I, I'm not hurting anybody on the others. <laughs> uh, thank you, Father. And uh, maybe it's a question consider very close that you just uh, Oh, uh, just ex explained what are the biggest challenges for synodal understanding of the church what uh, how to understand uh, for bishops or for the whole people of God what the challenges yeah I would say the equal the recognizing the equal dignity of all baptized mm -hmm. people and recognizing that the call of God, the gifts of the Holy Spirit are determining are, and should determine the church life. Not only the historical tradition or uh, inhabits. Is it clear or should I... Uh, is an always tension between the like a gift of God and like in some order in the church. So it's always sometimes yeah. it's uh, uh, has some uh, clashings. Yeah, but you have to always have to be in the, together an order to have an order primacy and to have synodality, which also with uh, diversity. So it's. Mm -hmm. um, I will give an example to be more precise. Hmm? Regarding, for example, the uh, women ordination, mm -hmm. it has nothing to do with the authority decision. It's not the authority decision issue. Mm -hmm. It is the the point is to discern what God is willing for its for His church mm -hmm. and for women and for baptized people in the church and we cannot content uh, looking just looking for the past and saying and, and, and stay in the 13th century or 16th century or even 20th century the call of God is to look forward and not behind to the past, to the future, to the present and the future, and not to the What is the will of God here and now? Hic et nunc, for this person, for this community, for this church, for this country. This is contextuality also, which would be taken into consideration. Mm -hmm. uh, but also, we have to take in account the, our history because the history where the God we acted have, and we gave, have when gave we us some instruments how to discern His will in the, in the history is very also important. We must take into consideration our tradition, our history, our evolu evolution, but we have not to be enclosed, to be prisons of traditions. Mm -hmm. The life tradition of the church is Christ, is not the inhabits. Mm. Yeah. Okay, very delicate question, but it's <laughs> now this, uh, this question is raised uh, a lot, uh, especially in this synodal mass uh, meetings. And uh, one more question about synodality, uh, because uh, 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 will this work on the synodal path within the Catholic Church? Will this work influence on, on, of the, on the Orthodox churches in the world? Because when we said synodality, Orthodox could say, oh, we are synodal church, but 
Actually, sometimes synodality is like a club of uh, bishops, yes? And synodality must be something broader than only uh, bishops gathering together. Does this Catholic uh, discussion on synodality it will influence the orthodox understanding of the phenomenon? Synodality is not the uh, specificity of the Catholic Church, which mm. uh, has rediscovered it yeah. lately. The Orthodox tradition is a synodal tradition. In some evangelical churches, like in Presbyterian uh, tradition, there is a synodal uh, tradition. The, in different way, of course. But synodality is not the call of God for Catholic Church. It's the call of, it's the call of God for all churches of God, for the global church of God. So, together, we have to learn from each other. We have to share together our experience, synodal experiences, to try to listen to each other, to better know each other, to dialogue with each other, uh, and to discern. And then we can make decisions or take decisions, and we can collaborate, we can be in communion together. This is why I said synod a synodal church is always an ecumenical church, looking for unity, visible unity of the unique church of God in the world. And do Orthodox participants or theologians took part in the discussion on synodal? In the when it was possible, it uh, happened hmm? mm -hmm. in different uh, contexts. But one of the good initiatives in that sense was undertaken by Pro Oriente, who uh -huh. invited theologians and bishops from different Orthodox mm -hmm. and uh, Evangelic traditions to uh, express their uh, theological understanding of synodality, and we have to learn from the Oriental synodal experience. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Father. And uh, maybe uh, uh, the last question, uh, in which way a synodal church can be an answer to nowadays political matters? Can be a an answer for our a what? in our days to the political matters. So a model, you, you, a, a, you yeah, synodical model. Unfortunately, sometimes, maybe very few, the political authorities are behaving in a synodal way more than in some churches. Yeah, of course. This is why I said synodality within the church and between ch among churches is like togetherness within the society. The human society is a community where people are related one to another, are linked, connected one to another. And this is the, once again, the ideal of human fraternity, which is spiritual and civil or political in the same time. Mm -hmm. no, the, 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 the same outcome is, uh, is how to say it, uh, uh, inspiring. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The synodality within the church and the society. If churches are demonstrating, are manifesting a good synodal life, then of course society will be inspired. Mm -hmm. yeah. and this inspiration is reciprocal, something we learn from society and something society is learning from the church. So it's, uh, there is an osmos. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean that uh, in our Christian life we don't distinguish mm. our church life from our social life. Mm. Mainly in our oriental theology, mystagogy is not 
allowing us to celebrate one thing in the church and to live another way in the daily life. You know, there is a unity between what we believe, what we celebrate, and what we are living, experiencing in the daily life. Mm. This is the mystagogy, and this is uh, the fullness and the abundance of life that Christ proposed to us and promised for us in John 10.10. 10. Mm. Uh, dear Father Gabriel, thank you very much for your presentations and for for the discussion thank you for coming long way from Lebanon to Ukraine and not afraid in, to come here in the time in the hard times of war on our land thank you for the solidarity with uh, Ukrainians and for for your prayers and uh, uh, we will pray together that peace will come on our land and uh, Thank you also for expressing us better uh, these important aspects of the church's life of synodality. What does it mean to uh, the church should be synodal as a walking together, uh, as following the Christ, as experience uh, in Eucharistic celebration, the church life in the every different context, different context, uh, global context of the church uh, is presented uh, in the world. And uh, first of all, discerning uh, the grace of the Holy Spirit, which lead our church to renewal, to think uh, in a new way and to express our life uh, of this, uh, in, uh, our life in Christ. Thank you very much for participating. The, pressure, in, the pleasure in the and the honor is mine. Thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. And thank you all who joined us uh, live and online. Have a peaceful uh, day. God bless you. <laughs>